In this video, we're going to create a watermark in Photoshop. We are not going to apply it to the image. That's something I'm going to show you how to do in another tutorial. And in that tutorial, I'll show you how to take this watermark that we've created and apply it in Adobe Lightroom to any number of images simultaneously in, in a uniform manner. But in this tutorial, what we're going to do is create a basic graphic watermark, which can be applied to your photographs in Lightroom and exported. So go over here to File and New. Now the size of this document will depend on the size of the images you're watermarking. Now I know that under normal circumstances most of my photographs are around 4,000 by 6,000 pixels in dimension. So I'm just going to create my watermark at 6,000 pixels. Now I probably will never use it this wide but that just ensures that no matter how far I blow it up that it still is going to look high quality. And I'm going to name this graphic watermark. I've set the dimensions in pixels to 6,000 by 3,000 to give me a little room horizontally to create this uh, graphic. And then I've set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch to make sure that it's appropriate even if it were printed out, it would still be high quality. Now I've created this document that is 6,000 pixels wide and I want to start adding a watermark to it. However, I need to know how it will look on an image that might have color in the background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this transparent layer with 50% gray. And the way I can do that is I can go up here to edit, fill, and then on the drop down, just choose 50% gray and leave everything as it is and hit OK. The reason I'm doing this is because 50% gray is a neutral color. It's not all the way black or all the way white. So when I'm designing my watermark, I can see what it will look like over something that might be 50% neutral gray. And for my watermark today, I'm just going to add my first and last name. And underneath it, I'm going to add the word photography. So I'm going to click anywhere in the document and I'm going to type out my name, Joseph Brewster. I'm typing it out in all caps because that's the way I want it to appear. And then I'm going to size the font as I prefer it. So right here on your font drop down, you'll notice that it doesn't really go as high as we need it because we're dealing with a massive document. So you can type in the numbers here or you can simply click on the text icon and drag until you get the size you want. It's not aligned properly, but don't worry about that right now. We'll align it in just a minute. Now I want the word photography under it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my layers panel. I'm going to make sure that I have my text selected and then I'm going to hit command or control J and duplicate my text layer. Now another way to do this is just to click and drag it down to this new layer icon. So now I have a copy of my text layer, which means I'm using the same font and it's positioned the same. I'm going to drag it right below and then I'm going to double click on that layer on the T so that I can type in a new word. Now you'll notice that I'm using the same font which is Arial Black. I chose this font because it's a pretty common font that you will likely have on your computer so you can try this at home. You can use whatever font you prefer in this case, though, I want a combination of a bold faced font and a light font underneath. So I want the word photography to be not nearly as bold as my name. So I'm going to go in and instead of Arial Black, I'm just going to use Arial. And then I'm going to reduce the size of the font. So I'm just going to click on this and drag down until I get the font the size that I want it. Then I will type out the word photography. Now this is not too bad, except I want some more spacing between the letters. If you go here to window, make sure that you have your character window available. You click on character and you'll see all these options for your typography. The option I want to change is right here. It is the tracking option for this text. And what I'm going to do, what you could do, is just click and choose something from the drop down, like minus 100 or plus 200. 
What I'm going to do is actually just type in 350. You'll notice that this has created a lot more spacing between the letters, and I kind of like that. Now, I do want this to be sized down just slightly. And rather than just changing the font size, there is a faster way to resize text by transforming it. You can go here to Edit, Free Transform, or you'll notice you could just use Command or Control T as your shortcut. I'm just going to hit Command T, and now you'll see that I have the Free Transform box around my text. Now, when I go to transform this, if I just click and drag, then it might squish it, it might warp it, it can do all kinds of crazy things. I want it to stay the same uniform size while I resize it. So I'm going to hold down on the shift key and I'm going to grab the top edge and start dragging it. Now you'll notice that it's dragging towards the left and that is taking it out of alignment for my other text. That's okay. I can solve that a couple of different ways. I can, at the same time I'm holding shift and dragging, I can push the option key or alt if you're on a PC. And what that will do is it will confine it to the middle. I'm now holding shift and option or alt and I'm clicking and dragging. Now I just get it where I want it and then hit enter or return. And I've committed that change. Now, this is a good start. I want to put a box around this now. And the way I'm going to do that is using the rectangle tool. That's U on your shortcut, or you can just go down here to your toolbar and select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle out around your text. And you want to go up here and make sure that the fill is set to no fill and the stroke is set to the same color as your font, if that's what you prefer. And then on the pixel for the stroke, I'm actually going to type in 75. Now that's giving me a good stroke size. I like that. Now you'll notice that right now everything is kind of aligned left and it's a little wonky. Things, uh, the rectangle isn't aligned with the text and the text isn't aligned with the artboard. So we need to fix all that. A really fast and easy way to align everything on your document is to select all which is Command or Control A. You'll see this selection active around the edges of your, of your document. And now that you've done that, go to your Move tool here at the top of your tools. And when you click on your Move tool, you'll be presented with these alignment options. I'm going to align vertical centers. The layer that I had selected, it just aligned it vertically. And that was the rectangle. Now I can select multiple layers by holding down shift and align them simultaneously. So if I hold down all of them and I align vertical centers, they're all aligned perfectly in the vertical alignment. I'm going to do the same thing for horizontal centers. Now everything is perfectly aligned in the exact center of my document. I can hit command D and that will deselect command or control D. But now you obviously see a problem that I have here because I want the word photography to be down under my name. So over in the layers panel, I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to hold shift so it doesn't move out of alignment. And I'm going to drag it down to where the line is. I'm going to get my rectangular marquee tool, which is M on your shortcut. And I'm going to draw a marquee around the word photography, where I would like the line to go away. Now I have this selected. I now want to invert my selection. The reason I want to do that is because I want to select everything else. And I'll show you why in just a minute. You can go up here to select inverse. Uh, my rectangle layer selected and my selection is all active. I can go down here to my mask and add a layer mask. When I do that, it's going to mask out that portion of the rectangle. Now I'm going to apply this to images that might be light and they might be dark. 
So I want to make sure that we can see this watermark even if the watermark is being placed onto a pure white background. Now how would we go about doing that? I'll show you. Let's create another layer right above our neutral gray. So go down, select your neutral gray, hit new layer, and we're going to fill this layer again. So go up to edit, fill, and select white. Ah, now we can see that our watermark just disappears. This is exactly how it'd look if we were watermarking an image and the image behind was pure white where the watermark was. That's not good, so we want to make it stand out somehow. Come over and grab one of your text layers. Any layer will do. We're going to do the same thing to all of them. And then right click and choose Blending Options. So I'm going to go down and find Drop Shadow and check it. Immediately it's going to apply whatever the last settings you used were or the default settings if you haven't used any recently and we need to adjust these. So I'm going to grab my angle and I'm going to angle it slightly different. I'm going to drag the opacity down to about 30%. Let's try that. I've got my distance set at 30 or so right now. Blend mode is multiply. The color is black, which is default. And then I'm going to drag my spread up a bit. Let's say to about 30 also. And I'm going to drag my size up just a bit. Now, I'm going to drag the opacity down a little more. And I'm going to play a bit with my size until I feel like I've got it the way I want it. I might actually take the distance all the way back down. And this is starting to look a little bit better. OK, I'm going to hit OK there. And you'll notice that my layer now shows these effects underneath it, drop shadow. And I can turn that effect on and off and see how it looks. Let's right click on that layer. Scroll down and copy layer style. Now we're going to select our other two layers, the rectangle and the word photography. We're going to right click on those and paste layer style. When we do that, you'll see that this layer style is applied to all three layers. Now let's go back and see how it looks on neutral gray. So it looks like this watermark is going to show up adequately on all of the possible tones that my image will have. Now this didn't end up being as big as my uh, canvas that I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is grab all three of my watermark layers, hold down shift and just select them all together. Now hit command T or control T. And the same way that I drug the photography word, I'm going to drag my watermark. I'm going to hold shift and hold Option or Alt if you're on a PC. Grab a corner handle and just pull it up until it's about the size of my document. Now I can get rid of this top and bottom space that I'm not using. I'm going to hit C or go over here and select your Crop tool. And then holding Option or Alt if you're on a PC, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag down now hit return or enter to commit that crop. And we now have a good crop on our watermark graphic. I need to export this so that I can add it to pictures and it has a transparent background. And the way to do this, the best way I've found for Lightroom, is you go up here to File and you can Export. We could do Quick Export as PNG and it'll just ask you for a place to put it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for right now. Graphic Watermark PNG. Watermark has been exported and it's ready to be placed on an image. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to place this graphic watermark on an image using the tools inside of Adobe Lightroom. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Obviously, you're going to want to put some thought into how your watermark should look. Have fun, subscribe if it's useful, and thanks again for watching.